Defense is because recruitment is down at the Department of Defense. If our military is not prepared to deal with battles in the future because recruitment is down, shouldn't we go in and investigate all the things that Wait, hold on a second. No, 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 hold on. What are woke policies at the Department of Defense? Here's, what, here's, here is what I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. If there are issues at the Department of Defense that are decreasing recruitment, because the numbers are crystal clear at this point, and we have many members of our military who have complained about some of the programs that are going on at DOD, we have a responsibility to get to the bottom of that. My friend Jody Arrington, who's going to chair budget, he wants to look into the budget and also look into entitlements. Do you know that Social Security is going to be insolvent in 2035? It is not going to be. That yes, is not true. Will. That, that is, is actually, actually not true. No, it's say. actually not now, true. Joy, it's actually not true. It's actually not. It, but it's actually not true. The financial community. I that's actually not true. That's Social actually Security not true. will go insolvent. That's actually not true. Those are the facts. That's not Should true. Should we not prepare that is not for true. that? What the Republican Party and what the Tea Party have proposed is privatizing Social Security, which would actually subject Social Security to the whims of the market, which I don't think that people. If you actually that's not what they paid into. No, the, no, if you look at the returns not, of the S&P 500 that's not true. since that is not 2006, true. That's not true. the returns of the S&P 500 since 2006, You're that saying, includes so you, 2008. You, okay, oh, so you support privatizing I, I, Social Security. No, I want to explain to you. I am a financial professional. I'm securities license. Actually, I just lost my licenses because I'm not allowed to trade anymore because I'm a member of Congress. Mm -hmm. But let me assure you, if you look at the S&P 500 from 2006 until today, the growth rate in the S&P 500 would have more than taken care of Social Security, way more than the federal government And has. each time that way you had more. a crash, it would subject people's no, Social Security true. funds I'm, to crash. Hold on a second. If you so let me just, in, hold on a second. We're not going to have a whole long thing on Social Security. But let me just be clear. You and you are in favor of privatizing Social Security. No, I'm not in favor but you of just argued it. for it. I okay. said you, you, you brought just it up and it. I brought you the facts but you on S&P 500. So if a bill came occurred. forward to privatize Social Security, you'd be for it? No, because what we should be doing... Okay. Hold then on. it's a moot point. Should, then it's we, a moot point. It's not a moot point. Then it's You're a moot trying point. to put words in my mouth. I'm but trying you to explain just to explained that the S&P would be the a better return than Social Security. Given better returns so than then you're for privatizing That is a fact. Don't cheapen privatization when the data is crystal clear that the returns would have been better. Okay, you're for it. You've said that you're for it. That means that it would have been a better situation than what we've seen to this point. This is Joy Reid shutting down Byron Donald, who gained momentary fame as the alternative speaker selection for a small group of holdout Republicans, now leveraging his 15 minutes of fame to go on TV and try and lie about the military, along with Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Now, Byron Donald tries to fearmonger here about the solvency of Social Security in an attempt to justify impending Republican efforts to cut the programs. Why? Because the programs don't benefit rich people. I mean, I'm sorry, but it's not more complicated than that. Republicans have been trying for years and years and years to cut these programs because Republicans don't think there's any value in helping people who don't fund their campaigns. That's why their sole legislative achievement when they had full control of government during the Trump era wasn't a middle class tax cut that was promised but not delivered. It wasn't an infrastructure package that was promised but not delivered. It wasn't a health care plan that, again, was promised but not delivered. The sole legislative achievement that the GOP actually bothered to pass was a tax cut where the benefits overwhelmingly favored the ultra-rich, millionaires and billionaires. We don't have to sit here and guess the Republican Party's priorities because they are outright showing us. But let's dig into the issue presented here by Byron Donalds. He says that Social Security will be insolvent by 2035. In reality, Social Security will not be insolvent. One of the trust funds that helps pay benefits will. The Old Age and Survivors Insurance Trust Fund, which helps pay the benefits for current retirees, is scheduled to be depleted by the mid-2030s. But that fund only accounts for about a quarter of Social Security benefits. The other three quarters is paid for by payroll taxes of current workers. Meaning so long as we've got Americans working and paying taxes, which they are certainly doing with a 50-year low of 3.5% unemployment, then Social Security will still pay out benefits. That does present the question of how we make up that gap if we are presented with a situation where the specific fund becomes insolvent, and the answer is not to privatize the program, which I'll explain why in a moment, it's to simply increase funding to the Social Security Trust Fund. And we increase funding through legislation, which those same Republicans complaining about Social Security's insolvency could do. Instead, they pretend like they have zero agency and just fall on their fainting couch and act as if we're headed toward disaster with no lifeboat. If legislators want a legislative solution, they can quite literally write the legislation. That is literally their only job. Instead, Republicans will pretend that there's no way they could possibly fund Social Security because it wouldn't be fiscally responsible. And then, of course, they'll turn around and demand that more than half of the federal budget goes to defense spending, so we can spend half a trillion dollars on the F-35 program to fund a jet that barely flies, but make sure that American seniors can now afford to survive, can afford groceries, can afford to keep the heat on? 
Well, come now, that wouldn't be fiscally responsible. The moment a Republican starts pushing back on the boatloads of cash being poured into our ever-growing military budget, I'll believe them when they claim to be fiscally responsible. But until then, those people can kindly fuck all the way off. And by the way, if there is one program in the entire country that we should want funded, it's this. It's the program to ensure that our seniors are able to live with dignity after a long life of work and service. Instead, it's somehow become normalized that dumping money with no oversight into the military is fine because we've become desensitized to years of jingoism, but God forbid we maintain the bare minimum degree of dignity for our own seniors. Consider too, when the left calls for the rich to pay their fair share, this is why. This is what our tax dollars should fund. Put another way, when the rich don't pay their fair share, the money that's being withheld is funding for our nation's seniors. So when conservatives rail against Biden's 87,000 new IRS agents to try and scare you about increased IRS enforcement, what they're doing is protecting ultra-wealthy tax cheats who rely on decreased IRS funding so that they can illegally hide their money. And when those cheats hide their money, the people who suffer the brunt of that crime are seniors who rely on federal revenues that'll fund programs like Social Security. So when Republicans like Byron Donalds vote to defund the IRS, which he did literally this week, recognize that he's helping those wealthy tax cheats avoid paying taxes and helping facilitate the partial insolvency of Social Security, which he then shows up on air to complain about. So if he's looking for the reason, he might want to take a look in the mirror. And you should know that this is a recurring theme in the GOP. Republicans try to break government because they need to convince you that government is never the solution, so they need to point to a broken system. What they don't mention is that they're the ones who broke it. They literally did it with the US Postal Service. The Republican-led Congress passed a law forcing it to prepay its health benefits for future retirees for 75 years in the future, which no other corporation does. But they needed to break the USPS. Why? Because they want to privatize it. Sound familiar? It is the same same playbook every single time. And for those of you who say, well, why not privatize it? The free market is more effective and efficient anyway. Find me a major corporation in the United States where the CEO isn't a multi-millionaire. That means that instead of all the benefits going to retirees, now millions of dollars will be siphoned off to a CEO or some C-suite executives, all the while allocating the bare minimum to retirees. You can't look at our predatory healthcare system, our predatory insurance system, our predatory prescription drug system, and expect us to think that the free market is the redemption that we've been waiting for. Americans are smart enough to realize that when our lives are put in the hands of a privatized company, the first, second, and third priority is corporate profits. And that company will not hesitate one single solitary second to fuck over the people that it's supposed to serve. So I'm sorry if I'm not jumping on the privatization bandwagon, but I'd point to the fact that I wasn't born yesterday. So good on Joy Reid for not allowing Byron Donalds to come on air and lie because that's exactly what he's doing. He knows that Social Security as a whole will not be insolvent by 2035, but he promotes this fear porn anyway because Republicans rely on lies and disinformation to manipulate people into doing what they want them to do. And what they want is a government that does nothing to help the people that it's there to help, but rather sell those people out to the highest bidder. It's an agenda that Americans wholly reject, but let's not pretend that being responsive to the will of Americans has ever been a priority of the right. Before you go, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can click the thumbnail right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work even further, the best way is to subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. There you can check out my interviews with major players in the world of politics, including President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Katie Porter, Jamie Raskin, and so many more. Plus other interviews that live exclusively on the podcast. That link is also right here on this screen, or just search No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen wherever you listen to podcasts.